day. Uh, very good. The, the wee lights on. Just in the big man. Very good. That's awesome. It's lovely to see you. Is that glaring in anybody's eyes, is it? That, them wee, that bubble. Just to try and help me see. Probably because I'm being and don't want to use my glasses. All right. Uh, just being honest. So uh, <coughs> it's great to see you all today. I had a load of jokes. Uh, real good ones this time. Uh, but you know what? The, I just sense the presence of God in the house, and we're not going to do that at the minute. We're going, we're going to go straight into what God has us here for. And if you were here last week, uh, <coughs> didn't hear last week's message, please, uh, if you can, get onto YouTube and uh, and look up Green Pastors Church, and it'll come up. Uh, it's real easy to find. I I have become a YouTuber. I'm, I'm, I've become a YouTuber. Uh, over the last six months, and uh, 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 there's so many uh, great messages from the Lord on that. So <coughs> let's do that. <coughs> let's pray. Father, we, uh, you know, Lord, that we have labored over this message, Father, and we just ask you that, that you'll birth it in people's hearts today. Lord, we, it's wonderful to be able to know you know you to be in your steps it's a lovely thing but but Lord it's more important that you know me because my salvation depends on you and so God just to pray today that you'll give us insight into the things of God in Jesus name Amen Last week we, we were on a, a John ten twenty seven, which talks about my sheep. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Okay, so, so <clears throat> there is a, 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 so many principles in scripture that says that we should and can hear God. He has not stopped talking. Stop. Okay. <clears throat> Sodom and Gomorrah are 24 hours away from obliteration. And the people are clueless. Lot, who is a believer, is also clueless as to what is coming and can't discern in the times good from evil. Abraham, on the other hand, knows what God is about to do. <clears throat> and God calls him his friend. And so because he's his friend, he shares his secrets with Abraham as Abraham follows in his steps <clears throat> in obedience and in the fear of the Lord. <clears throat> this church, I believe, is to be a city of refuge, a, a place of refuge, a repair shop <clears throat> in the middle of what Jesus described as the return of Lot's days and Noah's days combined. Jesus foretold that Noah's days and Lot's days would come again in world history but they would come combined. And in that day, their men's hearts would fail them for the things that are coming upon the earth. The, the suicide rate will be huge because men in anxiety and fear and without God <clears throat> will have no place to go and no hope. And the challenge before me as your senior pastor, is to get you ready. I have to get you ready. I have to get you ready to hear God so that you will not be clueless like Lot in those times and when they come. I need to get you going like Abraham. And so we as a church are to be a reflection of Father's heart. Father's a difficult word for a lot of people, but Papa's heart, okay? 
we are to be a reflection of Papa's heart and follow Jesus in his steps with the anointing power of Holy Spirit. Our spirit man, we are told, in Hebrews 5, 13 and 14, was given spiritual senses. An organ of perception is what it says in the Greek, which is to be sharpened and exercised by reason of use. I have to get you and I have to get me exercised by reason of use. I have to get you exercising your spiritual senses that will give you and I access to hearing God, knowing what God is at, and being sensitive enough to follow in his steps. The only place that he promises our protection is in his steps. That's where that protection is found, in his steps, in his well. <clears throat> and so I, that access to following us, as we journey through these days of darkness covering the whole earth and the great deception that is about to, to fall on this planet, The thing that I find wonderful is, and I want you who I hope to find wonderful, is that somehow the God that fired the stars and flung them into the sky would want to be my friend. Like he wants to be my friend, my my companion in life. That's, that's, what an invitation. What an invitation to be friends with the great I am. Hey, what, what, what would make you not want to experience that? Just to experience friends with God. You see, we were created before the fall to be in communion with God. We, we were joined to him, spirit to spirit, <clears throat> Holy Spirit to us connected. But when we fell, we were separated from our spiritual life source, our, our connection to God. And, and because we were separated to a spirit, the thing that kept us living meant that we died physically. We died physically. And spiritual organs of perception fell into disuse because we hid from God. We hid ourselves from God. We were afraid and we hid ourselves. And so that relationship, that connection, that bond that we had before the fall uh, fell into misuse and disuse. But since we are spirit and we have a soul, we will live on Somewhere, heaven with God and death and hell with the devil and his angels. And, and we have this choice. It's our choice. We can choose it. <clears throat> and so our spiritual organs of perception are part of our kit. They were built into us from the beginning. <clears throat> we were made for to commune with God. To be effective, they have to be exercised by reason of use. I want you to listen to John chapter 16, verse 13. I'm hoping it should come up on the screen. It says there, <clears throat> however, and it's Jesus that's speaking. However, when the spirit of truth has come, when you're born again, when he, the breath of God breathes into you, life into your spirit again, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you, now listen, things to come. Churches, we go in to the dark days and into the difficult places. We ought to know where we're going. He said he would tell us of things to come. May not know now, but in the right time, 
And in the right moment, he will reveal it to us. If those spiritual senses have been exercised and are working. Okay, the question is, are they working? So as a born again believer, how do we begin to understand how to exercise our spirit man? How are we going to do that? To hear and to know Papa God and Papa God's heart and then follow in Jesus' steps. How do I know what steps Jesus would take if he were you? And I know that when I'm following in Jesus' steps, I know that the power of the Holy Spirit goes with me everywhere. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Okay, so the, so, so the importance of getting in these steps, the importance of, of exercising that organ of perception is so important because it keeps us in the steps. And when we're in the steps, comes the power. The ability to live this life in a supernatural way. Oh my, that's, I, I, I just got excited there. We have set aside three weeks of, of prayer and, and of fasting. And, and we've done it. And I've done it. Because we, we're doing it because we're designed to exercise these organs of perception. And, and, we're, and what we're trying to do is to teach you to exercise them. Okay, so the next three weeks... Uh, we're going to teach on hearing God. Okay, how to hear God. How to hear God in the word. How to hear God in the prayer. And how to hear God in spirit. Okay, we're, we're going to focus and try and, from the word of God, teach you those things. How to do that. I, I believe that even if everybody here kind of ought to set that aside. Unless you already have your exercise, your, your organs of of perception already working and doing well. You see, <clears throat> I invited Pure Jim here today. Who enjoyed that wee exercise thing at the start? I thought that was pretty good. We might come that every week because it woke you all up. I think that was good. No, I had to sit down after it. But, but that was only because, you know, I'm, I'm not used to exercise. I'm not used to physical exercise. It, it, it was obvious for for some of us that we hadn't exercised for some time, uh, and too much turkey, too much turkey, and too much stuffing, and too many Ferrero Rocher. Hands up who like Ferrero Rocher? Well, I have a gluten allergy, and I'm not allowed to buy any of them anyway. <laughs> you see. It, it was obvious that we weren't fit. Our physical well-being depends on a lot on what we feed it. And if you will feed it well, okay, if you'll feed it well and exercise those body parts, you will grow muscle. Okay? You'll grow muscle. Be stronger and have a healthier heart. Yeah, <clears throat> when we uh, what really we done this morning was just a warm up. I thought that was a full deal, but it's just a warm up. And and so, <clears throat> what what a warm up does in the physical, okay, is it prepares the body for what is ahead. Okay, number two, it prepares the muscles to carry the load. And thirdly, it prepares the heart to receive the blood. <clears throat> and what I'm about to say to you is that what's true in the physical is true in the spiritual. If you want to understand how to exercise those spiritual muscles, we can look at the physical and see them and try and understand in the same way what we must do in the spiritual. We have physical organs and we have spiritual organs. They both need exercise to stay healthy. Come on. 
They both need to exercise. So to hear God who is a spirit, we must exercise these senses, these spiritual senses, and we must exercise in spiritual disciplines. Okay? It's a discipline to keep fit. Come on. I can, like I, yeah, and I don't have any. I don't have any discipline. I, you know, I, I spend my, all them years training and, and for football, for ballerina, and for Korean. You know what? I don't want to do that anymore. I'm done running around pitches. Okay, I just, nah, I'm done with it, you know. <clears throat> but it's not good because we should be exercising both our, our bodies and our spirit. Okay, and so we exercise in spiritual disciplines. Prayer and fasting is a spiritual discipline. Okay, it's going to work your muscle, your spiritual muscle. Okay, it's going to sharpen you. It's going to sharpen your sensitivity and your perception of hearing God. It helps you tune in. You know the way you've got the radio when you want to tune in and you don't know what it is and you, and you just didn't quite get in. The, you've got to tune in to hear the voice of God. Okay, it's to, that's what you've got to do. Prayer and fasting does. And, and prayer and listening does that. You see, I spent a long time talking to God and telling God what I wanted and what I thought he should do and way not enough time listening to what he wanted me to do. And it'll disappoint you. It'll disappoint you. It'll disappoint you. And so praying is such a, an important thing, but so is listening. And praying in the Spirit, okay, Praying in tongues. Just, just to, hands up. Who can pray in the spirit? Just hands up if you can. Hands up if you can pray in the spirit. Okay. You know, we're, we're, one of these, one of these Wednesday nights that we're going to do. We're, we're going to, uh, going to get, we're going to get Mark will teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, won't you, son? I, he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to. Okay. He's going to teach on that there, and then we're going to baptize in the, in the Spirit, all right, so that you can pray in tongues, all right? Then we're, we're going to, reading and meditation of the Word is a spiritual discipline. And when I say meditate, and that, I have to apologize, I have to, because I said last week, the Lord really slapped me when I get home. Uh, yeah, he, uh, remember I said about the uh, uh, Word for Today, I was very disrespectful for Word for Today. Word for Today is a great book. And God speaks through word for today. He did with me. It's, it, I was trying to get across that, you know, on the toilet and just reading it and then forgetting about it isn't a job. Okay. You, need, you need to meditate on what's going on and what has said. And it's a good book. So please, please forgive me for that. Then. So <clears throat> praying in tongues. And, and then the, one of the last spiritual is this worship thing. You see, God is looking. God is spirit, and He's looking for His people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so we, uh, what we and worship does, it opens up our heart. It takes down the walls. It takes down the barriers, and opens up our spirit to receive the word. Do you know what? What does it, it says? Uh, uh, David said in the Psalms. He says, uh, uh, "We enter His gates with thanksgiving in our heart." Yeah, we we come into the presence of God, okay, in worship. Yeah, okay. So <clears throat> you're listening well, and so we have to bring forth spiritual muscle <clears throat> and power as we operate in the well of the Father. And when we operate in the well of the Father, all things are possible. I love John sixteen and twenty four. It says, until now, you, Jesus says, until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. I just love the thought that God wants to answer your prayer and my prayer to give me joy. So in other words, that your joy may be full. He says, ask that your joy may be full. Isn't that great? Why would you not want to, why would you not want to talk to a God like that? Eh? That wants to answer your prayer 
and give you joy that your joy may be full. Now, turn quickly to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. We're going to read 15 to 19. If that's okay, guys, just we're going to, we're going to do that a wee bit less this, on this time. Ephesians chapter 1. And beginning to read from verse 15. Therefore, this, at the top of my Bible, it talks here of the wee spiritual wisdom, okay? It's spiritual wisdom, prayers for spirit. This is Paul saying this. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you. And I'm making mention of you in my prayers. And here's what he's praying. That the God of the Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, now listen, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Paul has been working on this church in Ephesus now for three and a half years. He birthed it and he nursed it. He cried over it night and day until he got that church established in the city. The city was filled with all kinds of wickedness and and perversion and Paul had been effective at planting that seed and raising it up and he says to the pastor of that church he says look feed the flock of God that God has made you overseer my responsibility is to feed you spiritual food okay so that you can exercise those organs of perception and have a walk with God yourself Okay, this is not about the pastor doing everything. Come on, come on, somebody help me today. This is not about the pastor. This is about the pastor teaching you to do everything. Okay, this is what this is what this is about. And and he, Paul is setting up the boss in this church in Ephesus. The boss, B O S S. Okay, which is boundaries. He's setting up boundaries. He's setting up order. He's setting up structure and he's setting up systems to sustain. Okay, you need a system to sustain. And so, because if he's going to leave it now, he's going to have to set up that structure of boss in order to, that that church keeps going and being effective. If we lose those boundaries, our, our, the order, the structure and the systems, we'll lose the impact on our generation and in our time, turn or, and in our turn in our town okay see and so revelation is really having God explain his word to you it's finding new truth that you never knew before you could read the scripture 10 times and all of a sudden you read it that one time and suddenly boof revelation I now understand that I read that 10 times and all of a sudden revelation, I now know it. Wow. And it's awesome. It's an awesome thing. That's what revelation, and Paul prays this, that you would have that. And he prays, and and now he's left Ephesus and he's writing back and he's checking on them to make sure that the wolves haven't devoured them and that the pastors have fed the flock. And so he, he reads, he prays, that the Father of glory may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Hmm. And we are asking for all that other stuff. We've, we've been asking for cars. We're asking for uh, diamonds and clothes and stuff. And, you know, that car isn't something that you can ask for. But if you have to stay at home and wash it every Sunday, then it's an idol. And he doesn't do with idols. 
you shall have no other God. So, have you any idols that keeps you away from church on Sunday? He doesn't like it. He's jealous. He's a jealous God. He's jealous. He, he wants you for himself. And so here Paul <clears throat> is asking for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus, the anointed one. Look at what this man values. Look at what he values. What you value has a lot to do with what and how you're going to come to the seat, the beam of seat of Christ. It's going to determine much of your reward in heaven. Okay, It's going to determine whether you get five cities or ten or one or none. It's going to determine what position you're going to have. You're, we are training now for then. Okay, this life is a training ground for what's to come. Look at what this man values. My goodness. And then Paul says that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Now, hold on a wee minute. I don't know you, but I, I didn't know. Nobody told me that my understanding had eyes. Nobody said that my understanding. I know I have two eyes in my head. But, but I didn't know that my understanding had eyes. I guess that's one of those spiritual organs. Paul says that you might have, uh, uh, that your eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Okay. In other words, he's asking the question, what happens if your understanding is blind? What happens if your understanding, your perception is off? What happens if your view, your thinking of your situation and on your situation and even your thinking on yourself and about yourself is off? That that there in itself is such a, a disaster. He's praying that your eyes will, on the inside of you, will be able to see what's going on on the inside of you. And then he goes, and then he goes on, and about your worth. He talks about your worth, what you can do, and what is the hope of his calling. You're blind to it. If those organs of, of perception are not exercised, Things are foggy in your world. Not because you don't have eyes in your head, but because you haven't exercised your inner eyes in the spirit realm where God wants to speak to you and show you things to come. Teach you his secrets. When you don't have inner eyes to know Jesus intimately, then you're going to depend on other people to make you feel valuable. Okay. You're going to have to depend on others. And, and when they stop telling you you're wonderful, you're in trouble. Come on. Oh, come on, help me this morning. We're, we're in trouble. And so we have to, every time we come, every time we, come, we have to be pumped up every week. Because <laughs> I'm feeling really depressed. I don't like me, and I'm just done with me, and I'm doing, you know what? <laughs> When you don't have inner eyes to know Jesus intimately, you, uh, you depend on other people. And your steps are just chance. You're lucky. I was real lucky. Huh? We, we believers are not lucky. We're blessed. Okay, we don't, we don't believe in luck. But God orders our steps. Okay. And so, <clears throat> you can be walking blind uh, into your future if your eyes of your understanding are not working properly. When you don't have inner eyes, you will depend on others. He says, I'm praying for you that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Because, listen, and this is one of these light bulb moments. That's the light bulb. It is not what happens to you that matters. Who's heard that before? Oh, come on. I've, well, at least I've said that before. So, it's not what happens to you that matters. 
Here's my revelation. It's what you understand about what happens to you that matters. It's what you understand about what happens to you that really matters. If you don't get understanding, you see, the Bible talks so much about all your gain, and all your gain, get understanding. Get an understanding in and through your spirit of what's really going on. That needs an organ of perception. It's exercised by reason of use. We must use it. If we don't use it, we lose it. If we will perceive it correctly, if we will have an understanding of what's going on, then, and if we don't, then we will have and be destined to repeat it. You know the way the Bible talks about going around that mountain? You've been circling around that mountain for, for I don't know how many years now. It's time for you to get an understanding of what happened back there in the wilderness. And it's time to move on. Get a shift going. Get a shift going. And so Paul prays that the eyes of your understanding may, may be in line. How you see in your spirit determines whether you will be clueless like Lot or like Abraham who knows what's happening. Now, understanding is the truth you stand under. Understanding is the truth you stand under. You can only stand under the truth of the word that you know about God. And we want to be hearing the voice behind the word and then stand on that revelation. And if the truth you're standing on under isn't true, if it isn't true, you're standing under a lie. A lie about you. <clears throat> a lie about how you see the place you're in. So if you went through something really torturous in 2020 or 2021 or wherever it happened to you, and you didn't understand it correctly, if the eyes of your understanding weren't in operation, you could throw the towel in. You could just give up because, you know what? If that's God, I'm, I'm done. So in order to perceive it correctly, you need to hear God's take on the situation. You need to know God's take on the situation that you're in. Because, and, and, and then that, trust God that he's good. Well, you know, that, that, that's the fight. That's the fight. I know we sing it. I know we sing it. We sing it. We sing it. You know that song? Uh, You're so good. That's totally a tune, but you know what I mean. You see, I knew I had to quit when I couldn't sing that. You're so good. Well, I am so sure. And so you have to get away to get God's take from what's happened to you. Is that Jesus on the phone? <laughs> you have to get God's take on it. You have to get God's take on your situation and your circumstance. If you have, if the, the understanding that you're, on, that you're standing under is a lie, and believe you me, the devil is a liar, and he will kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he's after you to do, okay? And if he is a way and a means of trying to wiggle his way in to getting you to believe him, you know what? You could be standing under a lie. And you could be huffing and puffing and angry with God because you've not perceived it correctly. Come on. Are you with me? Come on, that was worth a clap, I thought. Come on. That, that, that's word, folks. You've got to perceive it correctly. You need to hear his take on it to discern good from evil. 
He's always working for your good. What's going on in your life may not be good, but he's working for your good. Do you understand? That's so important to understand. He will bring good out of it. If you could see from, the, uh, uh, from his perspective, from a generational perspective, not just you and me and my family, a generational perspective, you would understand that what happens to you has an effect on generations to come. God is a generational God. He has planned things way, way down the line. And so there's certain things that happen to you that you may not understand. But if you trust that God has an end for this and it's going to be good, well, then I can at least trust him. Even when I don't understand. You have to trust in his goodness. You know, you can lose everything. You can lose everything. You don't want to lose him. You don't want to lose his presence. You don't want to miss hearing the voice. I have discovered in my steps with the Lord in, in the darkest and most difficult times of life, I was standing under a truth that wasn't true. It was only when I got revelation of the word that I got my eyes of understanding to see it for what it was. But I had to look inside me. <clears throat> and I nearly didn't make it because my perception of me and of my heart was off too. But the Bible is and it's interesting in communion and in times of communion, God asks us to search your heart. Search your heart. Don't come around this table without knowing what's going on in you. God's asking you to make sure when you come around the communion table that you understand you. And understand, get a, an understanding and an insight into your heart and where it is. Because it could be off coming around the table. And that's why many of you are sick and weak. If you had judged yourself. Come on. That's the, that's the serious nature of this. I'm challenging you today because, of, uh, look, uh, church, I, I came back because I love Jesus. And and I, I want to be obedient to God. And I'm challenging about the things that you understand about God and about yourself and about your heart that are affecting the outcomes of your life and the direction of your life and where you're going and the overflow in your life. Because the eyes of your understanding are blind or foggy. Now you have to take that bad understanding. When you've dis discerned and understood, you've got to take that bad understanding and take it captive in Christ and lock it up and put it away and don't bring it out. You see, listen, and with this I'm finishing. Come on, tune into me. Don't fall asleep. Give me five minutes, okay? God, Papa, so loved you. That he was willing to send Jesus to the cross to die for you. We get familiar with that. That's how much he was willing to spend on you. Just to save you. And so if you're sitting there today, I don't know how you can sit there today and say that you're not worth anything. Come on. How can you say you're not worth anything? You need the eyes of your understanding enlightened. Okay? You need to exercise your spirit. You need to change the lie you are standing under. All those years, 20 years, uh, <clears throat> and exchange it for the truth you know about God. 20 years of feeling inadequate. Twenty years of feeling alone, and nobody loves me. Twenty years, twenty years of sadness, because your insight and your understanding was a lie, 
And you know what? When you get your, uh, those eyes of your understanding in line, it will change the way you walk. It will change the way you talk. The way you talk about yourself. It will change your perception of your circumstances. It will take me off the suicide watch. Because I'm of some use. Somebody loves me. My mom might, love, might not love me. My dad might not love me. But Jesus loves me. You see, that's, that, if you get a revelation of that, if you get your eyes open to the understanding of that, my goodness, that will change you in the inside. You run around, I am who God says I am. I, I can do what God says I can do. And you'll say, I can be what God says I can be. And the only way to do it, revelation. Revelation will teach you that. And once it's born in you, nobody can pull it out of you. That's why these, this is so important. Your value was hanging on a cross. And he gave himself for you and he rose again so that you could follow in his steps and the everlasting life. Get your eyes focused on things above. Come on, get them off the things of this earth because I tell you, they're, they're temporal. They're, they're not going to satisfy and you can't take them with you. We're going to get robbed. The church is going to get raptured. We're still not sure when. Okay, but the church is going to be get raptured and you know what? The car isn't coming. Huh? The sofa isn't coming. Huh? The sofa's not coming. You're going... And we're leaving it. And don't you go looking behind you. And if you're attached to it, that's the problem. If you get attached to the sofa, you'll be looking back for the sofa and it'll cost you. Because it's become your idol. You see, God so loved. Is there anybody in here that would give me a witness to what God has invested vastness of it. The guy that had flung the stars into heaven. Just to make it like a, a like a playroom for our, his children. Just to make it lovely for them. Flung them up into the sky just to play around. Make it nice for you. Oh Lord. I tell you, if you know on the inside doesn't matter what pit you fall into or are put into as long as your insides are lit up with the truth of God's word and the leading of his spirit nothing say nothing nothing they do to you on the outside can overcome the light that is on the inside and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Come on, let's let's pray. Let's pray. The guys want to come up. Let's pray, please. You know, I've been praying today that somebody would take a step. somebody would take up the challenge of the journey the journey of knowing God and hearing God and following in Jesus and his steps it's such a wonderful thing to hear the voice of God like it's such a wonderful thing even feel his touch maybe there's somebody here today on suicide watch why don't come and come let us pray for you over here when after things is finished let's pray for you let, open up your heart and, I, and if you'll open up your heart to God I know I know that he'll reach out to you he will he'll reach out to you and you can experience his love and his presence. If that's you today, if God's speaking to you,
still leave here. That Sparrow God is speaking right now. Hear him. If you hear him, move. Move. And you'll find him. Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for these lovely people. Lord, thank you for them because I know you died for them. And so I know they're precious to you. All of them are precious. And so, Father, just I pray, God, that they will take up that challenge that you've given to them to exercise in their organ of perception so that they may see and know you in a whole new way. Lord, help us these next three weeks. Do wonderful things, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Thank you for listening.